All right, there we go. Speaking of recordings. Um, OK, so let's go ahead and get started. So I've shared the link to uh, the website for the, the guide for this series. Um, and I've recently been able to upload uh, videos of the prior two sessions, uh, and I hopefully will in the future be able to upload the recordings of these sessions uh, fairly quickly after the sessions are complete. So this session is the third session in our in the series, to, and this one is regarding developing a res research question. So here again is an outline of the entire series, you know, so you can kind of see where this session falls uh, in terms of content for the whole session. So we talked about types of reviews, we looked at different uh, review guidelines, and now we're going to be talking about developing a research question. So as always, if you have questions or comments, feel free to turn on your mic and ask them or put it in the chat box. I'm going to keep the chat box open and I'll try to keep an eye on that throughout the session. Um, also, if you are interested in being on the email list for this series, feel free to send me an email at this address. I'm going to put it in the chat, uh, tph at gwu.edu. So just email me and I'll add you to the list. This, you won't be inundated with emails from me. Basically, I send one email every other week, the day before the session, just as a reminder. So that's that's the extent of what that list is for. Um, so anyway, anyway, let's get started. So the outline for what we're going to be doing today is looking at the development of a research question. And so as with all of the sessions that I'm doing, the genesis of this uh, is is based on sessions that I've had with students and faculty over the years, and this is a common uh, area of discussion for us. So it's the idea of moving from an idea, so you have an idea for a systematic review, and turning that into a research question. So I'm going to talk about some different ways of framing a research question and different ways of framing your ideas in order to suggest a research question. And then I'm going to run through an example. So let's move on to the next slide. So my example for this is someone comes along and says, I'm interested in doing a systematic review about how COVID, about COVID and exercise among the elderly. Um, so this is not uncommon that people come with an idea for something they want to research. Um, though, so that's great to have an idea, but you have to remember that systematic reviews are about answering a question. And the guidance that we talked about last time, Prisma and Cochrane and all those other resources, they're sort of predicated on the, the idea that as you're doing the systematic review, you're answering a question. So it's important that we reframe our ideas uh, in the format of a question as that will facilitate the performance of the systematic review. So as we move through this, I'm going to start, this is going to be my example kind of running through this session of, I want to do a systematic review about COVID and exercise among the elderly. All right. So there's a lot of different ways of framing a research question. The one that folks are probably most familiar with is PICO. That's the one I listed here on the top. So PICO is an acronym, stands for Population Intervention Comparison Outcome. This is one that many of you are probably very familiar with um, as a way of framing a research idea. There are other ones though. So PO, Population Exposure Outcome, that's a framing device that's particularly useful for public health uh, research. Um, so when I, if I'm working with public health students, we often will use a PO framework. Uh, and there's a lot of other ones. So I have one here, SPICE, uh, Setting Perspective Intervention, Comparison Evaluation. This is a framing device for qualitative research. Uh, PICO tends to be very well suited for you know, traditional quantitative research, uh, but there are other devices for framing your question if you're doing uh, things like qualitative research. Um, so that's the, 
that's kind of what I want to point out here. This is where we will usually begin our discussion. Someone comes with an idea and we're going to try to frame that into one of these frameworks or one of the other ones, but typically PICO or PO. And then from there, we're going to try to develop a question. What I also like about doing this is that it will Framing your idea in this way will suggest questions that you're going to need to answer as you do the systematic review, and I'll talk about that more as we go along. Um, so, for my example, which was doing a systematic review about uh, COVID and exercise among the elderly, if I do a PO framework, the population would be elderly, exposure is COVID, and the outcome exercise. This helps me to frame my question to kind of pull out the key ideas and to see how they um, reflect and how they um, interact with one another. But what I like about doing this activity with faculty and students is it always suggests a lot of questions. And a lot of these questions you're either going to spell out in you're going to spell out explicitly in the PO framework and or they're going to suggest inclusion exclusion criteria, which you're going to have to make use of later when you're um, uh, screening articles. So, for instance, in this, as soon as I hear an age range, my or, uh, a description of a population that's based on age. Anytime I hear that is, okay, what specific age range? And this comes, is really important with systematic reviews about children. You know, what do you mean by a child? What age range are you looking at? People have very different definitions for that. Um, there's so many like subdivisions going from birth to 18 years that you really need to think about that. Um, so uh, that's one thing that I always think of. Other limitations for this are what's all elderly or are we talking about specific subgroups? So those who are in skilled care facilities or those at home or maybe those who are in a certain geographic location. It helps to think about how you define these groups um, because this will, uh, um, this is, this explains why, uh, I'm sorry, sorry, a little distraction here. Um, so this is something you want to think about, and it's going to come up with inclusion and exclusion criteria. Um, so then also when I say COVID, what do we mean by that? I think the implication is those who lived in the era of COVID, or do you mean like those who literally had COVID? Um, the other one is the outcome, and this is something where a lot of people really need to spend time working working on definitions uh, is comes in the rain realm of the outcome, and that's why I like the focus on outcomes. Uh, so for this, what's meant by exercise, like formal programmed exercise or any physical activity? Uh, so these are things that you really want to think about because the reason for really honing in on a well-defined question is that when you're performing a systematic review, the outcome is going to be an answer to a question. I mean, ideally, you're going to answer the question you raise. So what you want to do is avoid um, things that could confuse the answers, sort of. Um, uh, so things that could make... Uh, sort of conflicting information uh, within your definitions that can make the question difficult to answer, um, confounding variables, if you will. So that's why it really helps to define down the question. Otherwise, you end up with so many confounding variables that you can't really give an answer, or it requires so many levels of sub-analysis that it's just impossible to do. So it's really important to think about is this an answerable question? And defining these elements very carefully is important for that. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. So what would happen at this point is we have our PO. So let's, I started to define these. So I defined elderly as 65 plus in skilled care in the United States. COVID, not those who've had COVID, but 
generally those who have lived in the era of COVID and COVID disruptions. And exercise I'm going to define broadly as any kind of physical activity. So I started with my, my idea, I framed it in this way, and then I create a research question. So it becomes how have COVID related disruptions affected the physical activity levels of elderly individuals in the US living in scare, skilled care facilities. So you see from where I began to where I am now, I've developed a much more answerable question. Um, uh, so hold on, let me check out one thing here. Um, yeah, so this is the general process that I would go through with a with a student or faculty member. So the question is why? Why do we need to do this? What's the importance of going through this? And one of the big reasons is it really helps you to set up the next phase of the systematic review, which is turning our research question into a search strategy. That will be a topic for a future session. Um, but Basically, it's going to be these elements that are defined here that will drive the creation of a search strategy. The other reason for why is what I mentioned before is making sure that you have an answerable question. So removing any confounding variables that would, that would kind of muddy the water of your answer or require a lot of sub analysis that may make a project you know, unworkable. Another reason for going through this activity is the development of inclusion exclusion criteria. And again, this is going to be a topic for a future session. Um, but uh, these elements, so the definition of what elderly means, the definition of in skilled care, uh, the definition of the kinds of physical activity that I mean by when I say exercise, these are going to be criteria that you're going to have to formulate carefully before doing uh, title abstract screening, before doing the future screening steps um, for your project. And so it helps to really think about it at this point. So what I showed you it seems like a very straightforward process, but it's not always easy to do this, to really define these terms appropriately. And so one of the things that I find really helps to define these terms is looking at research. So doing some searches, finding candidate articles, the types of articles that you think you would, would be useful for your project. Um, and then looking, how do they define these terms to get an idea of how the folks who do this research, how they define these particular terms. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. So I want to kind of pause here. Are there any questions uh, at this point? I've covered a lot of, tried to cover a lot of things, but I want to see if, if folks have any questions at this point I can address. So either as chat or uh, using using your mic. So I want to give people time to type. Okay, so if anyone's typing, I'll, I will certainly be on the lookout for questions there. Um, but hopefully you can, you can see why this process is important to go through. Um, again, we start with a, most people are going to begin with a general research idea. Uh, but you have to keep in mind again, that systematic reviews are all about answering a question. And so that research idea has to be reformulated into a question. And it's through the frameworks like PICO and PO that I find those very useful for helping me reframe an idea into a question. And what I also like about PICO and PO is that it really pushes me to consider those elements of you know, population, intervention, outcome, exposure, whatever it is, uh, to really define those well. Um, so for instance, one of the ones that's often an issue is outcome. Uh, so it depend, this is often comes up in the form of, I wanna look at how effective is this intervention? So if it's a strictly medical thing, um, 
let's say there's a drug for for uh, managing diabetes. Um, the question is often like, how effective is this drug in the management of diabetes? It's that term effective that's, you know, the outcome. Um, so if you were to frame that into a PICO statement, the population would be those with diabetes, the intervention would be whatever the drug is, and then the outcome is, you know, quote unquote, effectiveness. Because a lot of people come with ideas and questions that use those super broad terms. Uh, an exercise like this helps in that it pushes you to think about what do you mean by effective? So for a diabetic, does it mean lower uh, blood sugar levels? Does it mean lower A1C levels at their you know, checkups every six months? Uh, does it mean lower mortality? Does it mean fewer amputations? Does, whatever, what, is, what do you mean by effectiveness? What are the measures of effectiveness? And that's an area where I think a lot of people, uh, many people don't put enough thought into at the beginning. They use terms like effective when they really need to think about what are the specific measurements of effectiveness. And that's again, like I just said, that's where reading the literature can help because maybe I don't really know how effectiveness is measured, but what I can do is read some candidate articles and see, you know, the people who do this research, how do they measure effectiveness? And then I would want to spell that out in, uh, um, sorry, in the outcomes, I would want to look at, you know, effectiveness for an intervention or a drug. Um, so that's the other value of this exercise is it pushes people to consider their definition of outcomes. Um, all right, so in conclusion, the point here was moving from an idea to a research question. The intermediate step there was framing your research idea in a PICO or PO format. Um, so those are kind of the key takeaways from the session today which will be preparing you for the next step in the activity, which is creating your search strategy. And the PICO uh, framework is really key in developing a search strategy. Uh, there's literally a formula for converting a PICO into a search strategy for PubMed or whatever other database. Um, so that's what I have for today. Uh, so again, my name is Tom Harrod. Here's my contact information. Next session will be in two weeks, as usual, the two week, two weeks per session. And, and not surprisingly, we're going to take the next step, which is, uh, starting with taking your research question, taking your PICO framework and developing a search strategy from this. Uh, that's going to be Wednesday, September 29th in this WebEx. And I shared the guide for the seminar series in the chat earlier. So the information will be there. And again, if you're on my uh, email list, I'll send an email out the day before uh, as a reminder for this session. So let me stop there and see, are there any questions or anything that, that folks want to talk about? Tom, I have a question or just a comment. Mm -hmm. um, uh, for those on the uh, rest of on this on this uh, webinar today, um, I work as an academic advisor for MPH students in the Department of Prevention and Community Health, and I have found that students are not getting training in writing what a research question is in their courses. So uh, I really appreciate that was an extremely clear example. Um, and I'm going, what I'm going to do is ask the uh, professors who teach our research methods course to uh, include your seminars in their <clears throat> required, you know, viewing material or something for their courses. But um, I have found that students agonize over figuring out a research question. And then once they do, they're okay. They know how to, <laughs> then they can move forward. Um, but teaching them how to write one doesn't seem to be happening. So thank you. I, I think that's exactly, uh, it's a great point. And it's something that I run into all the time too, is people find the idea of a systematic review overwhelming as, you know, that's a very natural reaction because it is a very large overwhelming project, or it is at first. 
but I think once you have that research question, exactly, I've noted the same thing is it sort of suggests a pass a path forward. And I think people find that very reassuring. Um, and it's critical because the success or failure of your project is it all begins with laying a good groundwork with having a good research question, having a good search strategy. You know, if those things don't get done well, everything that comes after is going to be kind of questionable. So I yeah, thank you for making that point. Cause that's, I've definitely noted the same thing. Um, great. Thank you. Any other questions, feedback, comments? Okay, not hearing any. Um, I will hang on uh, in the session. Let me turn off the recorder.